Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. It's good to see you all. It's good to see some people whose names I know and whose work I love and now to see your faces. Uh, my name is Stephen Salmoni. I'm one of the directors of POG, and I'd like to welcome you. I'll be the MC for this evening. Uh, and before I turn it over to Cynthia Miller, who will do our introductions, I just had a couple of things, basic announcements to say. And we're, we're delighted to welcome our three wonderful readers, Nicole Poussard, Cynthia Hogue, and Sylvain Gallet. I hope I said that okay. Uh, Nicole, I think, is coming to us from Canada today, I believe, and I think this makes this our very first international hog reading, which is extraordinary, you know, for us to do. I hope we, we should do more of these, absolutely. Um, I'd like to thank on behalf of POG the following organizations and groups for their support. So the, the Arizona Commission on the Arts, Poets and Writers, the U of A Poetry Center, the U of A English Department, Arizona Quarterly and Shaq's Press. And also our many uh, individual patrons and sponsors, that too many to name at this point, but we would not be able to do what we do without your generous contributions. And I know that's a cliche, but certainly that's very, very true. If you're interested in uh, helping with donations, please, visit our website, which is www.pogarts.org. And I'll put that in the chat in a couple of minutes too. And we have a pledge form to become a, a patron for $100 or a sponsor for 50 or whatever you're able to contribute. We would really, you know, obviously love to have you be part of what we do. Um, I'd like to also announce our next upcoming reading, which is just one week from today. We usually have one a month. We have two in October. This one will also be via Zoom uh, at 7 p.m., not at 5 p.m., October 15th, with the incredible Martine Bellin and the incredible Bev Dolan, who um, you know, we wanted to have her come last year, and she couldn't make it, so we're, we're really glad to be able to have that happen. Again, via Zoom, 7 o'clock p.m. Arizona time, and you can go to our website again, you can RSVP the same way that you did to get in here. Okay, so number three, uh, I want to let you all know, I put it in the chat too, that uh, Nicole's new book, Distantly, which has been translated by uh, Sylvan and Cynthia, uh, is available at Omnidon Press, which I'm sure most of you know, and, or anywhere books are sold. And again, you can go to the link in the chat. It's a great book, please buy it. Uh, at the conclusion of the reading, as Cynthia said, we'll have a, a quick, you know, 15, 20 minute, whatever we want, a gathering. So please stay on the Zoom if you have questions or comments. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, we'll stay muted until then, but we'll, we'll re rejoin all together at the end. And finally, just two, two, uh, two, uh, two announcements of a general sort. Uh, POG intends this to be an inclusive and supportive and most importantly, safe space for everybody. If anyone should feel otherwise, please do reach out to one of our directors and maybe you could all raise your hands, our directors, Cynthia Miller, Lisa Martin, Tenny Nathanson, Joanna. Okay. And also POG would like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we call home, Tucson, where Pog is based is the ancestral home of the, the Tohono O'odham and Pasquayaki nations. We ask that we please take a moment to reflect on how in the wake of a history of violence and dispossession, we can move forward in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. So with that, let me give the floor to Cynthia Miller. Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Cynthia Hogue and her poems, and also her partner in crime. Um, and that that we could not do this reading without, and that is Sylvain Gallet. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how important this is to us. Um, Cynthia is a poet, a critic, an educator, a translator, specializing in feminist poetics, um, echo poetics, and poetics of witness. Um, um, her teaching had brought her to Iceland, Denmark, New York, Pennsylvania, the University of New Orleans, and finally, thankfully, Arizona. Um, she has um, many books and many efforts in all these directions. And some of her books that you might be interested in taking a look at is uh, When the Water Came, Evacuees of Hurricane Katrina, Interview Poems from 2011, Contain, um, Poems from 2022 from Tram Editions, um, distantly by Nicole Brossard, co-translated with Savan Gallet, which you're going to hear a bit of tonight, which is an exquisite piece of work from Omnidon Press, and upcoming 
Instead, it is dark. Uh, poems and History of War, Survival, and Love. That's coming out in 2023 from Red Hen Press. Um, it is just our luck that Cynthia Hogue has hooked up with Sylvain Gallet, um, her co-translator, um, not only of this book, but of um, Fort Fortino Samano. Am I saying that right? Um, the you're not going to tell me. I can't hear you. The overflowing of the poem uh, by Virginie Laluc and Jean-Luc Nancy. Um, he is a French economist uh, teaching French at the ASU, um, but having a, a little bit of time to forge these words without boundaries, I like to call them, making these elegant works available in English, truly the work of a great spirit and a great heart. So both of these readers tonight, thank you so much for coming. So I will be working with Nicole to um, translate her poems and the new poems that she has sent that are not in the book yet. Okay. Thank you. So I'll, Cynthia, I'll ask you to unmute yourself and you can, can you do that? Do I have to find you in my Yes, list? yes. <laughs> yes, I do, yes, I do. Here. And uh, I, we, oops, um, so what we've done is uh, we're doing a shorter introduction, first in French, of Nicole and you know, a few thank yous, and then in English. And then Nicole and I will read from Luantin and Distantly. Sorry. And after that, Sylvain and Nicole will read some new translations, eight, I think, eight new translations from a book that is okay. in progress. Very interesting. OK. Yeah. So. Uh, I say it in French, I'm sorry. Uh, nous sommes vraiment très honorés de, de lire ce soir avec Nicole Brossard. Nous remercions les dirigeants Donny Dawn, Rusty Morrison et Ken Keegan et toute leur équipe pour avoir soutenu ce livre « Distantly » ou « Lointain » contre vents et marées. Nous remercions aussi les responsables de Pub à Tucson pour avoir sponsorisé cette venue, et en particulier Cynthia Miller, dans le tableau New York Avril 2009, embellit merveilleusement la couverture de Distingue. Renommée dans la littérature francophone contemporaine, Nicole Brossard a été à la pointe du dynamique féminisme québécois, des communautés lesbiennes et d'écriture avant-gardiste, se consacrant elle-même à écrire à la fois par vocation et comme avocate. Dès les années 1970, elle a publié plus de 50 volumes de poésie innovante, de fiction et de non-fiction, non et de l'un d'eux, donc lointaine ou distant en anglais, Nicole et Cynthia Rock liront plusieurs poèmes. Connue pour l'originalité de sa poétique, euh, Nicole est la récipiendaire d'air de nombre de distinctions, notamment le prix W.O. Mitchell et un de Most Prize du Conseil canadien. En 2019, elle a reçu le prestigieux Lifetime Recognition Award du Griffin Trust. À la suite de la lecture de poèmes venant donc de Distanté, bilingue, publié par Omnibone, Nicole et Cynthia liront une sélection des derniers poèmes de Nicole. OK, and in English. It is a great honor to be reading tonight with Nicole Brossard. Mm -hmm. We're grateful to the board of PAG Tucson for its sponsorship, and in particular to Cynthia Miller for her beautiful painting, New York, April 2009. Uh, which is our cover. We also thank the folks at Omnidon, our editors, Rusty Morrison and Penn Keegan, and their team for supporting this book, literally through thick and thin. The three of us, Nicole, Sylvain, and myself, would like to dedicate this reading to Ken Keegan, whose design work on Distantly is impeccable 
And it was the last book that he was able to finish before going into hospice where he is right now. Yeah. So we are thinking of him. And this is a tribute to his work. Renowned in contemporary Francophone literature, Nicole Brossard has been in the forefront of the dynamic Quebecois feminist, lesbian, and avant-garde writing communities, devoting herself to writing as both vocation and avocation since the 1970s. She has produced over 50 volumes of poetry, fiction, and nonfiction, among many <laughs> other directions in which she has been creatively productive. And Luen Ten Distantly is one of these books. Known for the originality of her poetry, she is the recipient of many honors, including the W.O. Mitchell Award, the Molson Prize from the Canada Council. And in 2019, she received the prestigious Lifetime Recognition Award from the Griffin Trust. Distantly is a series of poems linked through the theme of life in cities, evocative distillations of postmodern urban life with a sharp sense of so social, cultural, and gendered histories of violence and beauty. After reading our, bilin our bilingual book published by Amidon, Nicole and Sylvain will read a selection of her new poems. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming. And Nicole, you start. Oh, you're silenced. Okay. Voilà. Okay. Voilà, c'est parti. Merci beaucoup à nouveau. Ville réellement, ville effleurée, d'où tu regardes les petits bras d'Isabelle Huppert quand elle récite les mots de Sarah Kane. Ville effleurée, où quelqu'un demande parfois si ça soulage un incendie ou peut-être aussi un tatouage. Cities really. Cities stroked where you watch the slender arms of Isabelle Hubert as she recites the words of Sarah Kane. Cities stroked where someone asks if sometimes a fire is soothing, as well as perhaps a tattoo. Au loin, avec leur cerne jaune, ou de près, tap tap de quotidien d'ennui, clapotis, de fontaines féeries, néons de nuit. Villes avec leurs grands tiroirs verticaux, les martini quatre olives et murmures. Au loin, villes flirtées dans le flou des civilisations. Nos mains entre joies souples, parois de miroirs et de mélancolie, l'électricité qui chute dans nos cheveux. In the distance, with their yellow circles or the closer tap, tap of daily boredom, lap of fountain, fairy neons of night, cities with their tall vertical cabinets, martinis, four olives, and murmurs. In the distance, cities wooed by the haze of civilizations, our hands between supple joys walls of mirrors and melancholy, electricity which falls through our hair. Ville du très grand nord, où j'apprends à toucher la matière grise des bêtes, leur peau sur les comptoirs, à essuyer le sang sur mes mains pour saluer qui vient de l'horizon turquoise des glaciers, avec une soif et un appétit qui tisse un lien entre la tendresse et le froid. Cities in the far north where I've learned to touch the gray matter of animals, their skins on counters, to wipe the blood off my hands so I can greet anyone who drops by, 
from the turquoise horizon of glaciers with a thirst and hunger forging a link between tenderness and frost. Oui, je m'habitue à l'idée de l'aura, à l'écran des corps resté là comme une empreinte au coin d'une rue, sous la constellation du chien, dans les pensées, je m'habitue à l'absence. Yes, I'm used to the idea of the aura, to the outline of bodies lingering like a trace on street corners, under the dark star constellation. In my mind, I'm used to absence. Au loin, Prague, le pont, le château, l'heure dans l'horloge, l'horloge dans l'histoire, le cimetière juif au tournant, Skopje, Istanbul, autres alphabets, commerce d'heures et d'épices comme rivière rouge, safran, pulsant dans le temps. In the distance, Prague. The bridge, the castle, the time on the clock tower, the clock tower in history, the Jewish cemetery at the corner, Skopje, Istanbul, other alphabets, commerce of hours and spices like a river, red saffron pulsing with time. Ville avec leur mort. Pas de cimetière, vraiment que des morts, des mots. Pour ne pas dire pas prénom, pas son nom, pas encore un malheur. Petit pas qui glace à chaque année. Je marche dans une ville neuve avec des mots, des os, des cheveux, des lunettes. Je marche avec quelqu'un qui a écrit un livre. Puis s'en est allé sur la pointe des pieds. Retrouver l'horizon, le lendemain de l'horizon. Cities with their dead. No cemeteries, really, only the dead. Words not to say. No first names, no names. Not misfortune yet. Small steps that freeze. Each year, I walk through a new city with words, with bones, with hair, with glasses. I walk with someone who wrote a book, then took leave on tiptoes to meet the horizon the day after the horizon. Ville sans eau. À l'heure des désirs brefs du matin, une goutte d'eau et sa lumière. Plus tard, pour contrer la poussière, il a fallu chercher l'herbe, le buisson, une quelconque trace du temps fluide et incliné à l'heure qui a soif en nous. Le songe. Cities without water. At the hour of morning's brief desires, a drop of water and its light. Later, to counter the dust, we had to search for the herb, the bush, some trace of liquid and gradient time at the hour which parches the dream inside us. Ville avec leur fou de Dieu. Cette fois-ci, je compte les mains, les pieds, les langues, les tuniques, les cailloux, les têtes, les barbes, les calottes, les voiles, les châles. Je ne compte pas les vertiges, les ablutions, les miracles, les coups de fouet. Dans les haut-parleurs, des dizaines de crachats de mots, un feu si grand qu'il faut de l'eau sur le front, les pieds, je compte les yeux, les doigts, Je compte jusqu'à la poussière. Je compte jusqu'à l'enfance. Cities with their fools for God. This time I count the hands, the feet, the tongues, the tunics, the pebbles, the heads, the beards, the skull caps, the veils, the scarves. I do not count the vertigos, the ablutions, the miracles, the whiplashes. In the loudspeaker, the dozens of spat out words, such a big fire that water must be splashed on brow, on feet. I count the eyes, the fingers, 
I count until the dust. I count until childhood. Ville avec leurs huîtres. Celle aux joues, j'aime cette saveur de matière intime qui nourrit les pensées. Vin, épaule nue des nuits d'été, à Sète, à Stige et dans toute la vallée de même à mon couple. La tête en amont du silence, je sais m'imprégner de l'huître et de son sel de clair. Cities with their oysters. Salt on my lips, I love the savor of intimate matter that nourishes thought, wine, the naked shoulders of summer nights, in set, in siege, and the whole valley of Mamran Kuk. My head upstream of silence, I know how to relish the oyster and its salt, fresh clair. Ville avec un visage. Parce qu'il vaut mieux soupirer, au-delà des croyances et plus loin, la solitude encore. Voici que tu la déploies devant toi, comme quelqu'un qui veut toute la mer pour soi, son infaillible lumière d'emportement. <coughs> Cities with a face. Because it's better to sigh beyond beliefs and further still the solitude. Here you spread arms wide before you, like someone who wants the whole sea for herself, its infallible light of passion. Ville avec leur vieille pile de malheur vacillante, entre mémoire et marée d'emportement virtuel, tellement que noir et très gris de poussière et de cris font dans ma bouche une érosion de vie qui ne se partage pas. Cities with their old piles of misfortunes, vacillant between memory and tides of virtual passion, so much that black and very gray with dust and cries make in my mouth an erosion of life that can't be shared. Mm -hmm. Ville quand quelqu'un te bouscule, dit « sorry, sorrow » à cause du bruit et de la pluie, s'empare à bras le corps d'une mélodie pour soulever le présent, son parfum fort de changement qui fascine. Tous les matins quand même, tu l'aimes, bras ballants, l'humanité sans oxygène au milieu de ces débris rutilants. Cities, when someone shoved you, says, sorry, sorrow, because of the din and the rain, wraps arms around a melody to lift up the present, the strong perfume of change which fascinates you, every morning, anyway. You love humanity with helpless arms, without oxygen in the middle of its gleaming debris. Ville où l'on est toujours près de quelqu'un, debout, entre les archives et le visage de sa mère à rattraper, d'un coup, de mémoire et d'horizon. Cities where you're always close to someone standing among the archives to recapture her mother's face in a stroke of memory and horizon. Ville avec son nom. Un seul hurlement de néon, milliers de jetons et de passants, spectateurs de cirque et de hasard, écorchés vifs d'ardeur dans le désert, si beau, si rouge, Las Vegas, ses dés et tapis de Paris, sa tour Eiffel, ses gondoles, ce ciel de Venise si bleu, si faux. Pétale comestible déployé comme un envers de liberté, strip de futur, surveillance marchande. Cities with its name, a single neon howl, thousands of tokens and passers-by, spectators of circus and chance 
flayed alive by ardor in the desert, so beautiful, so red. Las Vegas, its dice and bays and bets, its Eiffel Tower, its gondolas, this sky of Venice, so blue, so fake. Edible petal spread like the reverse of liberty, strip of future, marketing, surveillance. Ville avec mon visage qui revient. Ville avec espoir dans la mire des sanglots. Pensons-nous que l'aube est un mot? Ou avons-nous dit par erreur tango sueño? Ce matin-là, dans une ville d'Amérique, sourire, sève au-delà de tous les calendriers. Je respire lentement une vie de mots, fresque, femme levée dans une joie d'errance et d'infini. Cities where my face returns. Cities with hope in the crosshairs of sobs. Do we think that dawn is a word? Or have we said by accident, tango sueño, this very morning in a city in America? To smile sap beyond all schedules, I breathe slowly, a life of frescoed words, women wrapped in the joy of wandering and infinity. Ville, parce qu'on est sincère, avec nos ombres de nouveau monde, enfoncé dans le temps et le sentiment. Ville pleine de nos odeurs de fin du monde, avec leurs bûchers, leurs veuves, leurs ponts, passages et fleuves d'encre. Cities, because we're honest, with our shadows of a new world buried deep in time and feeling. Cities filled with our odors at world's end, with its pyres, its widows, its bridges, passages, and cities of ink, rivers of ink. Sans avoir peur de la peur, ni du vent méticuleux qui annule au passage les pensées dociles, ville couchée en chien de fusil, comme le font un jour les civilisations, puisque nous rêvons en continu d'un autre rêve, déjà un autre rêve confondu aux nuits de déluge et de chagrin. With no fear of fear, or of the meticulous wind which in passing cancels docile thoughts, cities lie all curled up, as do sooner or later civilizations, because we dream continuously of another dream already confused with another dream of nights of deluge and grief. Grise, rose ou sans feu, ville balayée par les aubes, survolée comme champ de mine, avec réponse au loin enfouie. On dirait douleur fantôme entourée de pétales bleus d'un après-midi, ville au présent, sans dire adieu. Rose, grays, or no fire. Cities swept by the dawns, flown over like minefields, with answers buried far away. We could say a phantom pain circled by blue petals on an afternoon. Cities at present, not saying farewell. Ville réellement. Quand le froid taille dans les arbres de petites agglomérations de sens, si tu apprends à toucher facilement l'épaule de quelqu'un pour changer l'avenir, touche. Cities, really. When the cold carves in the trees small agglomerations of meaning, if you learn how to touch someone's shoulder easily, to change the future, touch. Ville après le malheur. Quand le silence inonde la lumière avant 
et après le malheur, ville avec du vent dans les cheveux, puisque tu aimes, en marchant sur les ponts, bien sentir l'eau de torrent rouler dans le temps comme en la poitrine. Puis tu les aperçois, revenant de loin, Paul Célan et Virginia Woolf, dans leur élan de grande marche. Cities after misfortune. When silence inundates light before and after misfortune, cities with the wind in your hair because you love to walk over bridges, feeling deeply the torrent's waters rolling through time like your rib, rib cage. Then you glimpse, returning from afar, Paul Ceylan and Virginia Woolf in the wake of their long walk. <laughs> and thank you. That is what we'll read from distantly. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, Cynthia. Merci. 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 Okay, and then the new poems, um, we've, we've been working on these drafts, and we'll just say they are drafts, um, oh, drafts. not the poems themselves in the original, just the translation, <laughs> but to share with you this new work. <laughs> Wonderful. Entre-temps, le verbe être est devenu liquide une forme de chuchotement obscur de la poitrine aux lèvres, ainsi que, jadis, on imaginait la souffrance entre deux morceaux de silence. Meanwhile, verb to be has become liquid, a form of sober whisper from breast to lips, just as long ago we imagined suffering between two pieces of silence. Au jardin, tu réponds à toutes les questions. Quand une œuvre devient-elle un tombeau Depuis quand la fragilité humanise-t-elle Que serait une femme augmentée sans son animal L'émotion, la spacieuse. In the garden. You answer all the questions. When does a work of art become a tomb? Since when does fragility humanize? What would an argument woman, romantic woman, be without her animus, the emotion, her spaciousness? Ne pas simplifier les mystères qui nous accommodent. Seules les énigmes tiennent parole. Don't simplify the mysteries that accommodate us. Only enigmas keep their word. Noir est un chiffre tombé du silence, un chiffre brisé entre fenêtre et feuillage. Au-delà de la planète, ce n'est plus vrai. On est partout brisé dans l'arbre sans pouvoir toucher au chiffre tombé. <clears throat> Black is a figure fallen from silence, a figure broken with between ledge and leaf. Beyond the planet, it's no longer true that one is everywhere broken in a tree, unable to touch the fallen figure. C'est promis. Et les phrases seront faciles, les cailloux normaux. Pourquoi s'assombrir? Pourquoi se concentrer, tête inclinée, vertige, dernier balcon, envol? It's a promise. The sentences will be easy, pebbles normal. Why dark? Why focus with hedge, head tilt, vertigo, last balcony, flight? Au présent, je suis toujours la même phrase et son silence, une forme de condensation, buée d'univers. At present, I am always the same sentence, but it's silence, a form of condensation, 
mist of universe. Mm -hmm. Ce manuscrit contient des répétitions, un clavier, des avalanches, une approche critique de l'ego, des hôtels et un turquoise d'ailleurs, des livres, où l'absolu de jadis, tu le contemples encore. This manuscript contains repetitions, a keyboard, avalanches, the ego's critical approach, Hotels and turquoise from elsewhere, books where the absolute of long ago is what you still contemplate. Mm. Il y a des arguments. Que devient la matière entre nos bras, suspendue? Que devient le vécu des corps heureux? Si le noise est le noir, si la nuit écrase. Les tulipes. There are arguments. What becomes of matter suspended between our arms? What becomes of the experience of happy bodies? If there's noise and darkness, if night crush the tulips. Et voilà. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Yes. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and thanks to everybody for coming. Just love seeing you all. So uh, thanks to all of you. What a beautiful and spiritual and sweet reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we typically uh spend a couple of minutes. If anybody has any comments, we can unmute everybody. You know, we do a QA with the translators, with the poet, with anybody. <laughs> 